And I've had so many girlfriends tell me, like, I love that I can just turn my brain off around you. And I honestly think that's, that's where most women want to be. Women don't want to be leading and making decisions and all these kind of things. This is also why women, I, I think most women should not be in the workforce because it adds way too much pressure. Like the, like the average, you know, white collar desk job or like corporate job adds way too much pressure yeah. to a woman's life. Women do not handle pressure the same way men handle it. They don't, they don't. It, 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 and it makes them masculine. And they, they go to the work, workplace, rambling about, I'm a bit all over the place, but whatever. No, go ahead, they go, go ahead. They go to the, women go to the workforce, they're, they're working a corporate job, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility, cool. That puts them in their masculine, their masculinism. So that's, not, that's not the natural feminine state of being. And then they go home to their man, who's also been in, in that very competitive environment, what happens? The two of them are com combative. They're, by default, they're in a combative state of mind right. the moment they see each other. Right. It takes, and then if they're doing, if they, you know, if they are aware of this, then she will do things to get herself back into a more feminine frame of mind, and he'll do things to keep her more feminine, like, like leading, what? like leading, yeah. like telling her what to do, like, like, j even something as simple as baby, wear that red dress. We're going to this place tonight, eight o'clock. Wear those shoes. Like making decisions for her. Something as simple as that will oh, allow her to relax, let go. Oh, he's got it. Oh, yeah. I don't have to think anymore. Oh. Now I can switch off from the mental mode I was in and work, that masculine energy, I can finally get back to my feminine. I think women, I think a lot of relationships would do a lot better if women weren't in the workforce and in that masculine all day, because right. they can naturally be a lot more feminine. Right. And I think any woman listening to this will understand exactly what the fuck I'm talking about, because she's felt the difference. Women who've been in it you know, more than like two relationships know the difference between being with a guy who is masculine and puts her in a feminine versus being in a relationship with a guy who's a pussy right. and she has to lead. You were, you were saying that you've been in relationships before whether you were in a more feminist frame of mind. Yeah, and, and those never work out because, because you always get into those modes where it's like it's a compromise. We have to like meet some way. And I, and I do remember uh, later in the later years switching that frame. And actually, the first girl I tried this with, I, I think I came across some masculine material, say. And then I was like, oh, this is an interesting concept. Like, this sounds right. Yeah. So I, just, I read as much as I could about it. And then, like, I took notes, like, you, you lead them, you tell them what to do, you, you show confidence, you, uh, even, like, when they're stressed out, you have to remain calm, even if you might be freaking out of your mind. Yeah. Um, that made the world a difference because they trust you. They yeah. look at you like, like, you have everything under control and you're going to make the decision whether I agree or not. That's exactly how that works. And so I'm, I'm wondering for you, were you, have you always been in this, this frame? Or like, how were your earlier relationships? Exactly like you just described. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. High school, high school relationships, early like late teens, early twenties relationships. Exactly like you just described. Yeah. From this like egalitarian feminist point of view, absolute dumpster fire <laughs> of a relationship. <laughs> Terrible. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, made that mistake like a few times before. Yeah. I was the definition of insane, doing the same thing again and again and I, expecting a different result. It's it's really sad because I have I still have friends like who, who are who still deal with these sort of dynamics and I look at them knowing what I know and I'm just like, bro, if you just like switch your fucking balls on, they <laughs> they could fucking listen to you. And like I know guys who literally have spent years with women who have they have kids with, they don't respect them, they fucking cheat on them, yeah. they go out, they don't listen to them, and it's like it's sad to see. It's sad to see because it's not meant to be like that. No. And, and, the, and the woman isn't happy in that situation. Yeah, she's not. Like, you can't, the, pro, the problem is you can't really listen to the words that women say. And that sounds bad. But, it's but, but, because they'll, they'll just say things because they're in, a, they're in an emotional state at that point. Or they'll say things because you've said, them, you've said something to a woman that has made her feel a certain way. Doesn't mean what she's saying. Like she doesn't, she doesn't have any like core belief behind what she's saying, and more importantly, what she does, her actions in the real world, are the only true indicator of how she actually, what she actually responds to. Right. You know. So a woman will say, like, if, I know if I'd, we'd cut this clip up and I put up, put out something saying, on my Instagram, for example, saying, look, tell women what to do. Like, tell her what to wear. Like, what time to be ready? Wear this dress. Wear this. Wear these shoes. Blah 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 blah. You tell like this is this is what you should do for a first date. I will get a comment, or a dozen comments in there from, surprisingly, uh, rather unsurprisingly, ugly middle-aged women, <laughs> saying, right. oh, "I would never let a man do that for me. Oh, if a man said that to me, I wouldn't go on a date with him." Well, 
Correct. No man wants to go on a date with you because you're fat and ugly and you're middle aged. But the pretty women, the one that every, the women that men are actually attracted to, they fall head over heels for that. They love it. They absolutely love it. So certain women, women will sabotage other women. Yeah. Like women are really nasty like that, especially like online and internet. Women will say things because they, and I'm not, I'm not even sure if they're even consciously aware of this, but they're gonna, they'll say things that is, they'll, they'll give other women advice, which is dog shit, which is the complete opposite of what women <laughs> should be doing. They should not listen to women. And I think it's subconsciously like a competitive thing. They're like, oh, I know that like, I don't really believe this. I'm gonna say this so the pretty girl over here makes a fucking bad decision so I can actually get a guy. Women will do, especially as they get older, they start to age out or they, they get fatter or they get uglier, they'll start to give some really shit advice right. to young women. Like, I mean, that's the crux of feminism, really. Like, feminists are never really the prettiest yeah. or the happiest women. Yeah. yeah, they are. And they're out here trying to convince all these really, like, impressionable young women that, you know what? Being a mother is, you know, victim. Or being a mother is oppression. Loving, like having beautiful, loving, having beautiful kids that you love and adore, that's not happiness. That's not fulfillment. You know what's fulfillment? Working a slave wage job for Megacorp over here, that's true fulfillment. Yeah. No, like it's, it's just mind boggling that people can fall for this bullshit. It's